Hi, I'm Tom Biebikauser, the owner of Wetland Restoration and Training. I have found one of the most difficult things to understand is how wetlands hold water, why they don't go dry. So I've studied many natural wetlands and constructed wetlands and have come up with techniques to get wetlands to hold water as planned. So today we're going to be looking at how wetlands hold water and we're going to be making two models and these models will be in plastic boxes. And you think, well, how can that help me understand? Well, if you can envision why these wetlands are holding water in plastic boxes, you can transfer that to natural conditions on the ground for restoring wetlands that are successful. So stay tuned, let's get started. Let's build two different types of wetlands. One that's supplied primarily with rainfall and precipitation, the other one that's supplied with water mainly from the ground. So what I have here are two boxes and these are plastic boxes and I've filled each with soil and we're going to simulate wetlands that hold groundwater and wetlands that hold surface water. So let's start with the surface water wetland technique. The wetland I'm building in this box is based on clay. I have found soil that's high in clay and I'm going to rake it smooth on the surface. Uh, there is no topsoil that's already been removed. Now this clay is loose, it won't hold water. We could pour all sorts of water in here. The only thing that would hold the water is the plastic container, not the clay itself. We're going to change that. I'm going to lightly compact the soil that's in the container by stomping on it. That will remove some of the air spaces. If it were to rain, this wetland would only hold water because of the plastic container, which would be like bedrock. We're going to change that. We're going to rearrange this clay so it holds water like a natural wetland that gathers precipitation and it's slow to soak into the ground. Natural wetlands that are based on clay soils, the clay is compacted in the basin. I'm going to compact this soil so that it will hold water like a natural wetland. And I have this uh, what's called an iron bar or a spud bar and that will really give me some good compaction. I'm reducing the height of the clay, the thickness of the clay, by at least 50% by compacting. So when I examine the soil in natural wetlands that are based on clay, the soil is compacted. And there are a few air spaces between the soil particles. This is why the water is slow to soak into the ground around the entire bottom. All right, now it's compacted. The plastic container has been filled with soil that's high in clay. It's been shaped and compacted, and now we're ready to see if it's going to hold water. Oh, you don't want to wait for it to rain. That could take a month for this wetland to fill. All right, so we're going to fake it. We're going to pretend that there's a rainstorm. Let's find out if this wetland that's based on clay is going to hold water. Pouring water in, oh, is it ever puddling. It's not soaking into the ground. The water level's coming up, it's coming up. Look at this. We have a wetland and the clay is what's holding the water, not the plastic box. And this is how surface water wetlands contain water. Uh, what happens is that, that clay is compacted and it's shaped into a basin, a bowl or a depression, and that's what's holding the water in a surface water wetland. The other main way that wetlands hold water is that the soil is saturated and there are shallow depressions in the surface of that soil that expose the groundwater. So let's take a look at this wetland in a box here. What I've done here is that I have this plastic container and we're going to call that the valley. The valley is dominated by bedrock and the bedrock is not permeable. So what happens is it's like a huge bucket that when, the when it rains the valley holds that water and the soil that's in the valley is saturated. So what I've done here is that I've filled this valley with soil from an actual wetland. The soil is saturated and it's quite dark in color. It's dark gray and it's black that shows me it's wet all year. However, there is no standing water and we're interested in building a small wetland here to provide breeding habitat for amphibians. So we're going to reshape the surface of this groundwater saturated area and see if we can make a wetland. going to create a shallow depression in the center. I'm digging down deep enough where I can see 
I'm through the organic soil and into the mineral soil. I'm shaping a wetland basin that is deepest in the center, and now I'm going to shape gradual slopes surrounding it by spreading that soil that I remove. All right, I have now built a shallow depression in an area of saturated soil. And watching it, I can see water seeping into the bottom and from the sides. We're going to wait a few minutes and see what happens. As we are waiting, water seeped in from the bottom and from the sides of the depression and now has filled the wetland area. And this is all groundwater. What I did is I removed the soil and it was replaced with water. And this is a groundwater supplied wetland. And what is really holding the water is the container, which is similar to bedrock that's impermeable. So this is what a groundwater supplied wetland looks like. Oftentimes groundwater supplied wetlands have steep slopes and they tend to be down in deeper depressions. So they intercept the water table. In order to restore a wetland, it's important to understand how the wetlands were drained. Our example is this wetland that we built that is supplied primarily with groundwater. It's in this plastic container. The plastic container we're saying is bedrock that's not permeable. The soil within the plastic container or the valley is all saturated. We dug a depression in that soil. It filled with groundwater that was seeping in from the bottom and the sides. Now we're going to figure out how do you drain a wetland like this? Well, we need to dig a ditch. Ditches are dug to drain wetland areas. And the ditch is dug so that it is deeper than the bottom of the wetland that you're trying to drain. And the ditch has to be sloped downhill. So let's dig a ditch and drain this wetland. And looking at it, oh, it's a nice looking wetland. It has gradual slopes. I see the hydric soil, but there's a rim of soil around it. So if I simply dig a ditch through that rim using an excavator, I see the water starts following the ditch that I dug. I'm going to move this soil over to the side. However, the water only reaches the rim of the plastic container. And we can't make the water go any farther. We can't get the water out of that wetland. We have to do something radical to get this wetland to drain. And that's how people drained wetlands. They did something radical. They broke through the rims along rivers. They broke through the natural rims around wetlands. They went underneath roads with their ditches. So let's drain this wetland and we're going to cut through the rim of this valley using a saw. And I'm going to cut a deep notch using this saw. And that's what happens when you drain wetlands. It is a mess. There's water and mud everywhere. All right, I have now cut a notch through the valley wall, the rim of the wetland. And now I can take the excavator and I can make a deep ditch. And this deep ditch will pull water from the wetland and carry it downhill. And I can see the ditch is not quite deep enough. I need to deepen it even more. We're going to do that using this knife. All right. So now water is coming out. I'm going to take the excavator and dig the ditch even deeper and just drain that water out of there. And if you ever seen a wetland being drained, you'd be amazed at the steps it would take to get that water out of the wetland. Keep deepening this ditch with the excavator until all the water is out of this basin. Now, not all the water is out of the basin, so we're going to use a dozer and we're going to fill in part of the basin with the soil that we removed from digging the ditch. Now, it takes a while for ditches to remove surface water and groundwater, but they're very effective at what their purpose is all about, and this wetland will dry within a couple of days. The experienced excavator has drained this groundwater supplied wetland by digging a ditch through the center of the wetland, and the ditch was deeper than the bottom of the wetland, and it drained out through the rim. We cut a notch 
through the valley wall and uh, that allowed us to get the drop on the drain pipe and to drain this wetland area. But we have a problem now. This ditch has separated our farm field into two fields. And it's going to be really difficult to cross that ditch. We'll probably have to build a bridge or put in a big culvert. There's another problem with this ditch. It's going to erode. Head cuts will form, there'll be erosion, and we're going to have to keep it cleaned out because of all the soil that's deposited. And there's another problem is that trees will grow along the edge of the ditch and those trees will shade our fields and reduce crop production. So there's a much better way to drain a wetland than to leave the ditch open. And that way is to use buried drainage structures. This is a modern buried drainage structure and this is a four inch diameter slotted drain pipe. And if you look closely, you can see that there are narrow slits. And this is buried in the bottom of a ditch that's dug to drain a wetland. And these slits will allow groundwater to enter the pipe and then to flow downhill in the pipe that's in the bottom of the ditch to the outlet, which is usually another ditch. Very effective way of draining wetlands. And I know farmers who are putting in miles of this every year to drain wetlands. And what this uh, buried drainage structure will do is eliminate standing water from a wetland and it'll also lower the elevation of groundwater. So let's show how this is used. Generally we would wait a few more days for this to dry before putting in the drainage structure, but we don't have time for that. So I have the drain pipe here that has the slits in it and I'm going to place that in the bottom of the ditch now it's placed in the bottom of the ditch and I have to use a laser to make sure it's on a gradual slope and there are no dips and rises. And then I bring back the excavator operator and the excavator operator carefully covers that drain pipe. Carefully covers it, leaves a little bit of rise over the pipe for settling. Shapes the field so that we can farm across and now over the days and weeks to come, the water table will drop, there will be no more standing water, and this wetland will be drained. And this is a wetland that is what we call a surface water wetland. Uh, the water is perched on the surface of the ground, and it's perched because there's a clay layer that's compacted and very dense in the basin. So let's see how we drain this. Well, to drain this, we're going to have to dig a ditch. All wetlands are drained by using ditches, and the ditch has to be deeper than the deepest part of the wetland and it has to go downhill. So how do we do that? Well, right here I see some clay along the edge and I can use the excavator to dig out that clay and that moves a little bit of water up against the edge of the container. And we're saying that that container is the natural rim of the wetland or the valley wall, but the water can't get out. And with every single natural wetland, there is a rim that holds water in the basin. So we have to figure out how do we cut through that rim with a ditch to get the wetland to drain. Well, I can't do it using my hands and I can't use a shovel, so I'm gonna have to bring in some equipment like the saw. And I'm going to cut a V-notch through the container and get that water to drain. What a mess. But I see now that the ditch is deep enough, the V-notch is deep enough, so now the next step is to take the excavator to come in here and to shape a ditch. And this ditch will remove all the water from the wetland, just like opening the drain in a bathtub. All right, we have effectively drained this wetland using a ditch. Now what we can do is take the dozer and fill in the basin. However, there's a problem. There's now a ditch going through the center of the field that we want to farm. We've effectively split our field into two separate fields. How do we get across that ditch with the tractor and not get stuck? So I have a model of a drain pipe right here, and we're going to try to install that in the ditch that we use to drain our wetland area. 
So we've taken elevations using a laser to make sure the bottom of the ditch is sloped downhill. And I'm going to place this pipe in the bottom of the ditch. And then I'm going to start taking soil from around the edge and from the pile that was left along the ditch. And I'm going to take the soil and I'm going to cover our plastic drain pipe. And what I'm doing is also leveling the field, make it much easier to farm, removing the rim that was on the natural wetland, taking that rim and using that rim of the natural wetland and using it to fill the basin and to cover the drain pipe that we've installed. Now we'll level the field and fill in the wetland basin. When installed properly, these buried drainage structures can be expected to last forever with no maintenance. They passively pull water out of the ground and from the surface, draining wetland areas. and They've been used all across North America. I would say the majority of the sites that you identify for building a wetland have been drained using ditches and in the ditches they placed buried drainage structures made out of clay tile, plastic pipe, rock, or wood. The drainage of wetlands is hard work and it's very expensive. In the 1800s, the average farmer subscribed to two journals. And in these journals, they taught about drainage and the need for drainage. The example given was a flower pot. They wrote that a farmer should consider a wetland to be a flower pot with the hole plugged in the bottom. And drainage is all about finding how you can open up that hole in that giant wetland to drain out surface water and excess groundwater so that you could farm the soil in the wetland area. Wetland restoration, we look at doing the opposite. We try to find where the farmer has put the hole in the bottom of the flower pot or the field and how we can plug that hole and restore the contours to bring back a naturally functioning and appearing wetland area. This is Tom Bibikauser with Wetland Restoration and Training. I invite you to subscribe, to share, and to like this video. Thank you.